Mouse Tavern, Mouse speaking. Uh, yes, I'm looking for a Mrs. O Problem. First name, B. Ah, uh, yeah, just a minute, I'll check. Uh, B O Problem? B O Problem. Come on, guys, do I have a B O Problem here? You sure do! <laughs> <laughs> Hey all and welcome to this fun tutorial. Today I'll be designing and constructing this cool little building from The Simpsons. Moe's Tavern was first seen in Season 1, Episode 1, and it's safe to say that it is one of the most iconic places in The Simpsons world. Let's not waste any more time and get started with the tutorial. 90% of this model was made using a cheap laser cutter. The laser cutter I used was the GY430 with a few upgrades. It has a 50 watt laser tube, a motorized leveling bed, laser dock guide for accurate start points, water cooled, air assist to help prevent smoke obscuring the laser, and it also came with Corel Draw version 8. I added a small desktop camera on the inside so I can observe the laser cutting when it starts to cut and engrave due to my computer being in the next room. Before we can begin cutting, we need to design something to cut. Corel Draw is probably the most popular program to use with these cheap laser cutters and the operating system for this particular laser cutter, the GY430, actually has a plugin which specifically requires Corel Draw to operate. I started learning the basics of Corel Draw to create and design Moe's Tavern. You don't need to be an ace at using the program to get great results. A basic understanding of how to draw lines and merge shapes is sufficient to get started and as you progress with the designing project, you'll pick up and learn new skills as you go. Once you've finished the design, you'll need to separate all the separate components into groups depending on the material you'll be using to cut them out from. I've found that creating a separate page for each material being used is the easiest way to keep track of all the components and have them grouped appropriately. All the components will be cut using plywood of various thicknesses. I'll be cutting the walls with 1.3mm plywood, the base and roof will be 3mm plywood and the windows will be cut using 0.75mm plywood. With all our drawings ready, I'll prepare the plywood. I cut a small guide that fits into the corner of the cutting surface. That way when I place the plywood into the laser cutter, I can get an accurate placement and know exactly where the cutting of each sheet will start. Knowing this helps reduce the amount of waste and unusable material. In preparation for cutting, there are a few things that need to be checked. First is the focal distance, which is set accurately using the supplied guide. We also need to ensure the cooling water is flowing through the laser tube, which can be observed by seeing the return flow. Ensure air is flowing out from the laser head just above the cutting surface. You should be able to hear the air flowing. Very importantly, check the fumes are being vented outside as there can be toxic gases depending on the material you're cutting. Now we can power up the laser and set the power of the laser beam. Using a low power setting will help prolong the life of the laser. The large square shows the size of the material I've placed in the laser cutter. As long as the drawings fit inside this area, they will be cut from the material inside the laser cutter. I make sure to double check the settings and I can now begin cutting. It's fascinating to watch the laser do its job, and it's even better when it finishes cutting and you realised it's worked flawlessly. Now all we need to do is repeat the process for the other components. Just remember to reset the focal distance every time you change the material type and adjust the power. Thinner material usually requires less power. Now that everything is cut, we can start assembly. The separate components are grouped together as necessary, and the main structures are glued together using Helmar SuperTac glue. I like this stuff because it's strong and it dries fast. I'm using Barkman Magnetic Adjustable Snap and Glue Set to hold the walls together as they dry. I've been using these a lot when building various models, and they have come in very handy many times. They are available from Micromark, 
And if you want to save 10% off your total at the checkout, you can use the promo code BOULDER. Anytime you're working with wood, it's a good idea to have some sandpaper around. You may find some parts need just a touch of sanding to get the perfect fit. I use a fine grit sandpaper to avoid accidentally over sanding. It's very easy to accidentally sand way too much when using a coarse grit sandpaper. I typically use 600 grit for projects like this. When it comes to painting, I usually use the airbrush. The only problem is small pieces will fly away if not secured. To secure these small pieces for painting, I use some masking tape with the sticky side facing up. Just make sure it's not too sticky because we don't want to break the small parts trying to remove them from the tape. Everything gets primed in white before painting it the final colour. I apply many light coats of primer rather than one heavy coat. These are the main colours I'll be using for the building. Just like the primer, I apply many light coats of the desired colour. Some parts, like a couple of the roof details, were simply hand painted with a brush because there was only a couple of pieces. It's hard to find good images of the roof, so I took a bit of artistic license and made a tar paper roof using some masking tape with a slight overlap. Black was used to highlight the joins and then some black brown was airbrushed over the entire roof with some localised heavy spots giving a bit of variation in colour. Now that everything's painted, I can start gluing it together. The roof is pressed down and I used a 3mm thick piece of MDF as a guide for depth and glue is applied from underneath once it's in position. It's pretty straightforward, just take your time and try to be as accurate as you can. It's inevitable that some glue will lose from the joins, so don't forget to wipe away the excess. The green and orange windows are made using Photo Etch Inkjet Film from Micromark. It's similar to clear projector sheet, however the sheets from Micromark seem to retain more detail when using an inkjet printer to print the colour. The design is made using Corel Draw. I scaled the squares to closely match those in pictures of Moe's Tavern and then printed out the design onto the inkjet film. I like using the inkjet film because it's a little bit translucent and once I light the building from the inside, I'll get a realistic looking stained glass window. I carefully cut out the window. Once it's cut perfectly to size, it should fit nicely. If it needs trimming like this one, be sure to only trim a small amount at a time to avoid cutting away too much. The windows are held in position with a very small drop of glue in each corner. Because the windows are slightly see-through, I use some white paper behind each window to prevent seeing through into the empty building. For a bit of fun, I printed a picture of the inside of Moe's Tavern to place behind the front door so that when you look through the hole, you'll see some action on the inside. I did the same for the rear window as well. The Mose sign is made using 1.3mm plywood. 
The sign is engraved using the laser cutter, but I first paint the sign a light purple color. Once it's dry, I line the sign with some sticky note paper. I use sticky note paper as opposed to masking tape because it's much easier to remove after the engraving is finished. The sign is positioned so it will be engraved from where the door was cut out from one of the walls in the scrap material of plywood. I make sure there is a small dot in the top left corner because the laser cutting software will always place the image in the top left corner. By having a dot positioned at the top left and ensuring it's in exactly the same spot on all the pages will ensure that when I switch between engraving and cutting that the laser will cut in the correct spot. The page is duplicated and anything that is not going to be engraved is deleted except for the dot in the top left corner. Then when it's time to cut, everything is deleted on that page that is not going to be cut. The reason the sticky note paper is applied first is so the smoke from the engraving doesn't stain the surface of the sign. The edges are painted and then the sign is pressed into position with some tacky glue. We're almost done. The brick detail is simply drawn on using a pencil and the roof details are glued down. The final bit of detail is lighting. For this I went the easy option and used the Woodland Scenics Just Plug lighting system. I used a large warm white stick on LED for this job. It's very easy to apply the LED in the desired spot and then plug the LED into the light hub. The light hub is then connected to the power pack which plugs into the wall and that's it. The best thing about the light hub is the LEDs can be easily dimmed or brightened to suit your needs. Well that completes this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching and if you'd like to help support the channel and get some of the patron extras be sure to check out my patron page. All the support is greatly appreciated. Cheers and thanks for watching.